Hello everyone, what's going on? My name is Tim Pete. Welcome back to the TNC Podcast. We're all episode. here and it's, it's on time. It's, it's, it's an episode, episode of the podcast. It is an episode. We are we are trying to do episode 133 right now. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> totally, totally didn't pull it up. Um, but we're all here. We're all here and we're all paying attention. 100%. No one's doing anything else. Uh, yeah. On my true. right. That's true. <laughs> on my right. It's Friedman, also known as Andrew, but mostly known as Friedman. And left. Tyler, also known as just Tyler, also known as big to the anime expert, Tyler. And across. Or not just Tyler. Yeah. Fucking no man. Y'all know who I am. I got no name. <laughs> just oh the AIDS, bro. Oh my god. Um, We actually have a pretty solid array of news, so we're going to get right into it. So I added this, I think, like immediately when the last podcast ended this was like the day after the last podcast i think i brought up like not even an hour after yeah. i was like oh fuck the steam deck we didn't talk about it last oh, time oh yeah that's right we didn't talk about it. that's that's what it was it's not that it was even new it, we forgot it so the steam it was, deck. it was like yeah it was breaking last time look but... it's valve made a switch so yeah how do i put this i honestly before don't know anything even, about it before even talking about the steam deck because it's literally just if you took a tiny windows computer but like put a controller around it is what this is like like let's yeah. not beat around the bush it's nothing insanely groundbreaking this is a different form factor laptop made for gaming um and it's not even the product itself that has me excited it's watching the community just tear itself apart over whether this is or isn't a good idea <laughs> is probably the most the most entertainment i've had out of gaming journalism in a long time it's pretty funny like people there's no one there's literally no one in the middle ground who's like this is probably a cool idea for mobile PC gaming. Either this is this is it, this is Nintendo's fucking dead, or this is, oh man, this is Steam Machines Part 2. Okay, this is, uh, okay. Um, okay. I honestly All hadn't right. thought about it. Let's say, uh, I'm going to say my prediction is it's Steam Machines 2. Yeah, I mean, so... I don't think anyone gives a shit man, about this. I, I, th I think it's kind of fucked up, because I think it's actually a pretty great idea, sure. and if I had, like, extra money to burn, I'd probably buy this. Yeah, I'm going to argue that there's, there's there's a specific user this is for that this is going to be one of the best products they could possibly buy. I think it's great. That said, I am also not buying one because I don't, I'm not mobile enough to warrant needing one anymore. Yeah. Like back when I was in college, when I used to travel a lot, like that would have been amazing. That was why oh, I got a yeah. Switch. If I was but, in college, dude, I would, I would buy the shit out of this. If people want to ask the question of do I get a gaming laptop for college, it's fuck no good. It's get something for class and buy a... a uh, buy steam this deck. yeah buy a steam deck i just don't think that market either exists or is as big as you guys think it is to make this successful oh we're not, oh, no, saying, no, no, no. That we're it not saying it's big enough i'm just saying no. like this is a product that for a specific market sector is a yeah. perfect product and they've been clamoring for something like this sure but like no i don't think I don't this know. is going to throw in the switch like it's yeah. not it's not even going to come close this isn't gonna no. you, i don't think i think this is another steam machine i don't think we're ever going to see another one of these in history i mean honestly if the switch 2 comes out i'm probably gonna switch to the steam deck for games because like i already have a switch i don't play it that much like when i want to be mobile like i don't see myself buying more switch games because i have enough to get by but if i have to pick another mobile console and steam just has your whole library up till now it's kind of a cool selling point should we go through another handheld generation switch where someone has to choose is the steam deck better than getting the switch too but i yeah. feel like this is all tied to this like this is a similar thing almost more i feel like to the steam controller where it was a similar thing that was just an add-on of hey we can make any game work with a controller and even that didn't work well and a lot of people didn't really well, implement no one it cares. Well, hold on. Yeah, but, so, so but, as as someone who owns the steam controller i still think that touchpad fucking sucks like no, I, the, but, you can't you can't get around a, a bad product right it is really bad. The I actually can't use this that thing. It's that touch pads were such a bad idea. No, I literally I'm only not... use it for visual novels. That's all it's good for. I'm not disagreeing at uh, all. Although I did see, I watched the Linus Tech Tips. <laughs> oh, I watched the Linus pretty good, eh? Tech Tips. I watched the Linus <laughs> Tech Tips on it. And he he says that they don't. They're like definitely a lot better than the Steam controller. No, it. So I wasn't even completely saying 
It's like a steam control. Uh, uh, you sound you, you're sounding pretty negative, Nancy. No, 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 no. I'm not saying I'm not negative. Oh, go, oh, I'm I'm saying I'm not trying to say this is a steam controller again in the sense that it's physically a steam controller. I'm saying the steam controller was supposed to be the thing that Valve put out to say, hey, anyone can make a game work with a controller because we're gonna have this thing that does a lot of the work for you. But even then, even if the controller had been good, do you really think that many people were going to start playing games that had no controller support with a controller like that? Uh, depends on the controller. If it was that good, people would buy it. I just, I feel I like one hundred. I believe in that so much because there are people, there are people still want a GameCube controller for what it is. There are people out there like who still want an Xbox like Three Hundred and Sixty controller for what it is. No. I, I honestly think there are some good pluses and minuses to a 360 controller that, like, I like the 360 controller, this is my own personal opinion, better than the Xbox One controller, and if I didn't like the DS4 so much, I would continue to try to use a 360 controller, hands down. Interesting. I would go out of my way to buy a 360 controller that works. I'm in the opposite. Like I, I hated the 360 controller when it was out, but I actually really love the Xbox One controller. I can't really put my finger on it, but I anyway, love sorry. both. I yeah, didn't notice enough difference who... to love to love both. But this, but this <laughs> goes back to what we were saying before, where it's like there are people who it can work for. Do I, I totally, think it's going to be a fair. huge success? Probably not. I mean, it isn't. There's a good chance it's not, but like. All I'm, I'm not, saying is I'm that not trying to disparage there. what you guys are saying at all. I'm just saying. I hesitate to really even say much positive about it because I like it's not a product that's worthless, but I just can't. Valve doesn't seem to have produced a single actual physical product that people like. Well, hold on, I'm I'm gonna make an argument here. So we we always shit on Google for their their product cycle is let's release a product and then never iterate on it because iterating's for losers and product <laughs> launches are for executives. That's how Google works. With Valve, their idea is here's this cool thing that that anyone else can leverage. You wanna you wanna make a a game that doesn't use traditional controllers but can use controller. Here, this is out there. If you support it, maybe people will like it. Steam machines. It's for this particular sector where well, okay, that one's a little stupid. But where it's just people don't want to put a computer too. up to their TV. But it's it, the idea that Valve puts a product out there and says if the market wants it, they'll buy it. And it turns sure. out no one wants to play PC games on their big screen TV, which I can't believe. Um, but I, those, those I mean, I products. like my Steam Link, so... I understand. The controller's good for very limited scenarios. When it's good, it's good, but for the most part, it's not amazing. And I think with this one, it's a lot more simple. It's the same kind of person who would bring a laptop with a controller with them somewhere. This is almost a one-for-one. For one. Sure. So I think that it's... How do I put it? It feels like it's less of a strange market. I... Flip side is I feel like this is like VR where we're t plugged in enough where we're like, yo, VR is doing pretty good. And VR is cool. We had it at your place a few weeks ago, Freeman. That was cool. But I feel like the general populace still doesn't give any shits about it. And that means it's not really destined for any great success. Uh, probably not. They missed the casual market on this one, I think. What yeah. I'm actually dying to know is how much I mean, of the like... Because I consider the Switch handled. How much of the handheld market is literally just, just children? I'm generally curious how much of it is just parents buy this shit for their kids. Because if that's I just mean, what the funny mobile enough, market is overall, Steam Deck is not going to go there. It's funny enough, just before um, I got my oil changed to my car, like a week before the wedding, and I was waiting in line to get it, and there was a mom standing there, and her son was wandering around on the floor next to her playing Fortnite on a Switch. I don't yep. think I've ever actually <laughs> seen one in the wild like that. That was pretty funny, though. I've seen anyway. a lot of kids at the hospital play them, like bringing their own. I mean, it's the new Game Boy, not the new PSP. No, <laughs> no. If, if only, if only we could have the PSP too. God. Well, you I remember when I was a kid, I was very adverse to it because I was like, "How am I supposed to fucking carry this thing in my pocket?" And then you I want was to like, oh, discs with me, dope. places. This is dumb. And then Damn, I played, and I was like, transition. "Yo, the PSP." The PSP is pretty dope. What? Sorry, I was no, no, it's caught fine. up it's in fine. nostalgia. No, it's fine. You can get caught up in nostalgia. You know what? You know what's nostalgic? Left for Dead because Left for Dead is probably like, is like 
Wasn't Left 4 Dead almost like 15 years old at least? Oh god. Uh, when did that come out? Um, the original or the sequel you're talking about? Uh, the original... It's gotta be at least 2008. 15. Okay, Eight. so 13. Yeah. Oof. So, so speaking of nostalgic old things related to Left 4 Dead... <laughs> What? Um, Aiden and I played Back for Blood. What about it? Aiden had I, it in the show notes. The Back for Blood. Yeah, I know. Started. I know. I'm. That's what I'm. <sighs> I looked at this title and said, "This was a lot series. like the Left 4 Dead series." I wonder why they named it this way. Because it is. Yes. Because, because they it, were this Left is... for Dead, and now they're Back for Blood. They yeah. could just call it Left Three Die, like a sane person. Left Three. Die. Left Three Die. <laughs> so um, I really fucking like this game. I also like this game a lot. You guys should all buy it, and we will all play it. I was going to say, well, Tyler Tyler was telling me yesterday that uh, he is getting into it, and now I really want to try to get a beta key somewhere. I mean, also, you I can it. with Twitch. So oh, I'll well, it doesn't it. matter. It doesn't matter. Next, uh, In two days, the open beta starts. Oh, time oh, right. right. I'm not giving some Twitch loser some views. <laughs> right. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's fun. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it's a, uh, it's pretty great. Uh, the guns feel great. Shooting feels great. Uh, shooting was it? All the zombies are cool. The blood effects, like the art and everything, is pretty stellar. Yeah, um, I. The one thing I did notice is that like in Left for Dead, like you, you literally just blow apart zombies when you shoot them. They like lose legs and arms and all sorts of shit. And, like, I noticed that it's not, like, everything stays pretty solid in Back for Blood. So there's not a lot going on as far as, like, screen mm. clutter, which is nice. Not as satisfying it... for pipe bombs, though, because you don't get to see the stream oh, of yeah. blood going oh. off. You just but, see you know... just pop and that's it. Oh, that for was so for cool what it is, when you just it... see that thing launch. Yeah, it is, like, it looks a lot more... I don't know. I think it looks a lot cleaner in in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was just like grand old time. The new card system is pretty dope. Oh yeah, like, it offers a cards. lot more random versatility. Card games, <laughs> pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> That's how you you're Gwent in this game? <laughs> nah, this is better than Gwent, bro. <laughs> I noticed this with like a, a lot of games now. They keep throwing in these roguelike elements mm -hmm. uh like every level you get like corruption cards right which uh right now i think the only there's only like a few like one is stronger zombies or there's like a mist that gets pretty debilitating on the map um and like every every run through is pretty random as far as like how things are set up so like the roguelike is strong in the industry right now Although I think it's good, it adds a lot of replayability. Yeah, so I think it's very good for this game in particular. Um, I think this is what, if Left 4 Dead had this, would make it a lot fresher and probably. I mean, I already played the shit out of it a lot. It would just make me play it somehow more. Or I'd yeah. have like a better. I'd have more of an enjoyable time because it's like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen, and also the fact like, you can build out each of your characters to like the way you want with the deck system which i think is kind of interesting and like basically what it is is that you have a bunch of cards for this character and they're all right they're all unique right and like not all of them just get one deck each of them get their own deck uh as like far abilities. as like can... As far as I can tell, like there are generic cards, but I I right. do believe I've seen a few for that are like specific to the characters. Yeah, and that's that was the other thing. Like every character actually has, um, they have like bonuses tied to them, uh, and like I, I think a little less than half of the characters were locked, so I don't really know what the other ones do. But there's like one focused on uh melee combat that gets like extra stamina when they get melee kills and shit like that. Hmm. Uh, and then you have somebody that like provides extra healing to the whole team. You have somebody that increases maximum ammo for the whole team. So, and I've been playing a lot of Vermintide, and things like that are really going to mean a lot for the people that want to play that, the game at a high level. 
and yeah. like it's not going to be very many but if your game has like a dedicated following like you're 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 doing good uh and i think that's that's going to add a lot of versatility to the game in the long run it's not going to feel as like you can like try different things like you almost have like different builds in a like every run if you want to do that cool <clears throat> Yeah, so we're playing that game when it comes out, for sure. Yeah, might have to get it then. With the with the rumor that Overwatch Two is getting delayed, I need uh, something co oppy and fun. We'll get back. We'll get no, to that later. We'll get that later. Don't, no, 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 no. We're not transitioning. No, no, no. Because that's because it's, it's still an unconfirmed rumor. Right. It's not treated as news like the later section. All right, I'm adding it to the show notes just so that we we know we talked about it. Listeners, we're here to talk about completely un corroborated information that only one person on YouTube is hey, posted. Hey, look, one guy was like, hey, Overwatch 2 is delayed until 2023, and Luigi went, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe 20... Like, I understand if they were going to say, like, Christmas 2022. I'm like, damn, that really sucks. But, like, you know, to say, not this is, year, we are starting not next game. year, it's like, this is nowhere near close to finish. Yeah. Like, we should not have even showed it off last year. Yeah, that is... Uh... That's a bad one. Man, maybe, maybe, maybe Jeff knew what he was doing. Just maybe. <laughs> All right, let's let's go to real news. All right, in real news, uh, what is New World? Ah, uh, New know. World. This is the MMO from the trillion dollar company Amazon. Oh, Amazon. Uh... Yeah, yeah. And uh, much like uh, much like everything else, it is delayed. And many people are are actually uh, unsure Sorry. how to feel about this because, despite being a trillion dollar company, unlike some other company <laughs> companies we know, <laughs> uh, this delay is not nearly enough. And not like, nearly enough. I think everybody. I feel like there's blood in the water for Blizzard right now, <laughs> as I'm sure everybody is well aware. And it seems like they're pushing it out, like, just too soon. Which so, is disappointing, because I would like to see more MMOs. MMOs are a fun genre. Well, but... it sounds yeah, like you're running out of Final in... Fantasy XIV content. It sounds I'm like not. the delay was in response to beta feedback, though, which ultimately, like, if you get negative feedback and you decide to delay your game, like, I view that as a positive thing. It means you learn something and you know what you need to do to fix it. It as is. Opposed to, as opposed I, to... Yes. I, I get that. I think part of the re like I think it needs to be delayed more, and a lot of pe a lot of other people have been mentioning that like the it, the systems in the game are just don't feel complete, like the gameplay loops are just not the gameplay That's loops happening. just aren't there. Like the game is visually stunning and like it's really cool, but everything else like the mechanics of the game just feel bad and a lot of people feel like they just need to fucking take it all the way out and that they're rushing it to to get it wow because wow is just dead in the water right now good we need less competition in the mmo space i need guild wars 2 to really flex its <laughs> like 10 year old muscles i mean yeah oh well i mean that isn't that uh yeah, they're they're le they're dropping their own expansion news. They're doing the weekly class update videos until it comes out. So oh, they're shit. they're attempting to like be, hey guys, we're an MMO, and I'm yeah. excited for it. It's uh, but, like founders of my original guild from when I started playing, aka my college buddies, are back into playing again. So it's fun re-experiencing it. Yeah, MMOs. That's the one thing about MMOs. Like if you're not playing it with your friends, like. Are you actually playing the game? Are you playing a multiplayer online game? Are you playing an online game that other people are also playing? <laughs> Asking whoa. the real questions here. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking whoa. Every MMO player has asked themselves that question at some point. Anyway. Um, Anywho, yes, moving on. Speaking Damn it, of, Amazon. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. God, I lost my transition. I had something and now I just... Now just, just derailed. Um... Oh, next you know topic. what's derailed? Oh, you know what's not derailed? That <laughs> what's the line? What's the train line? All you what's had to do was, was follow the damn train, CJ. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, 
in a stunning, in a stunning display of we no longer make games, we make money. <laughs> Take two, uh, the company that owns such games as NBA 2K and Grand Theft Auto, uh, have announced that like that we are they were have fa- they were found out to have been planning their next three games as Grand Theft Auto 3 Remake, Vice City Remake, and San Andreas Remake. Oh, I would love a Vice City uh, Remake. Whoa. Isn't the problem with a lot of these the music, though? Like, yeah. Uh, licensing? Uh, yes. For Vice City especially, I remember there was a lot of... Oh, Vice City has some trouble. <laughs> yeah, but, like, man, I know... I. Uh... I know some people that can hook them up with some sick vapor waves. Well, so. I was going to also say maybe they modernize them to the point where they're like, hey, try a Spotify playlist instead. And here's a Spotify playlist with all the songs from. Oh, man. I just put game. my Troll Send playlist in there. That would really make that game. Uh, on top of this, there's also three unknown uh, games that are on the horizon for Take Two. Paul, this was leaked or was announced? Either. Uh, this was leak announced. Oh, so you're saying it's like the delay on Overwatch? It's like barely no, it's not even confirmed. It, <laughs> they, <laughs> haven't, they haven't really confirmed it, but they're also copyright striking everything about these games. Oh currently. boy! So, <laughs> like they didn't s- tell me. Tell me you're doing the thing without telling me you're doing the thing. <laughs> and uh. It's, I, mean, uh, it's, it's, I I I fucking hate it. Can we please just have Grand Theft Auto Six? Can we please like please? No, no, no. You, you want GTA Five oh, on the right. new console, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I forgot GTA Six is just online. I was gonna say online earns them literally. I know. They, they'll dollars. never. <laughs> they'll never have to make another game ever. Can I just say how funny it is it. though that. We have no. It's not funny. No, no, no. It's not funny, Tim. It's not funny. Let me finish talking. No, no, no. What's funny? What's funny is that Red Dead Online came out after GTA Line Online and seems to have basically vanished almost immediately, and is just everyone plays GTA Online still. I mean, have you seen the shit that's in GTA Online now? I'm, no, 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 no. I'm you not do saying there's no reason. It's, it's just like I, I don't know. I mean, they that was their fault. They they did not support Red Dead the way that they were supporting Grand Theft Auto, and I think that it every that has everything to do with the fact that it came out afterwards. Sure, because they're like, we could make a lot of money off of this, but. But we're we already money making a to make fuck money. ton of money on this. <laughs> so yeah, like, shark cards, baby. Why spend money to make money when you can do nothing and make money? <laughs> Dude. Let the yeah, money print itself. It. I, you know what? I've never seen such a terrible, a heinous case of microtransaction inflation as well. Like, all of the new cars that come out in the fucking game... <laughs> Are like are like one point three million dollars, like for like basic cars, <laughs> and it's like it's like a fucking sh- what's a shark card like five hundred thousand dollars is like twenty bucks. Yeah, like it's it, like it's ridiculous, and like it's terrible because I like you know I did once I was like back when I played you know a millennia ago, like I think to just buy. Like, one of the new things is, like, oh, to play this heist, you have to own a bunker. I had to, like, liquidate almost all of my assets just to get, like, the bunker. And it's, like, i had been playing GTA Online for probably close to 50 hours at that point. Ooh. And the fact to, like, li- literally just, like, sell all my cars and shit just to get that. And of course, when you sell the cars, right, like they give it to you at a fraction of the price of however much you put jumped into it. I mean, granted, it's like real life, but you know, fuck that shit. I don't know, fuck it. Speaking of fuck that shit. <laughs> Does anyone care about Star Citizen anymore? Man, I Bro, put two hundred and fifty dollars okay. into it. It's not about. It's not about caring about Star Citizen, right? It's about recognizing it's about that 
four days ago was the day that they finally finished the first star system uh. for the game. <laughs> how are they making money off this still? Bro, Easily. have you seen how much some of those ships cost? Yes, it's too. I so like funny the thing, supporter I've... ship. Are I've, insane. I've talked about this before, but back when oh, Star right, Citizen yeah. was a Kickstarter before they did their own website, yeah, I kickstarted I it that. for their hot for the two fifty constellation tier. Technically I still have a ship in that game. I remember it's so long ago that I was in fucking college talking with people on raid call for people from my channel. Oh yeah. Talking to them about what our guild was going to, the Timpedia guild was going to do in fucking oh. Star Citizen, and how we were going to try to find a carrier and like turn it into our own base. Amazing. And I don't talk to like <laughs> really a single person from that group anymore. And I don't give a fuck about Star Citizen. Listeners, if you're a member of that group Man. who's for some reason listening to our podcast, yeah, chime in. I don't come care. below. Try to revive the guild. Let's go. I mean, there is Try still revive that, the guild. There is still that Discord, but I haven't gone in there in a long time. Um, no, but uh, I even remember um, like trying to run their like walk around your ship hangar thing. And I, oh man, I remember years ago they did the design a ship contest where people like brought their own designs they did this huge show and they're like your ship gets in the gets like developed with the team and like put in the game and everything and they, it was really well done i remember being super hype about that and then just i mean you know they've made more money developing this game <laughs> than fucking no. most games make when they come out and actually get sold i was gonna say they've they've made more money than most games have for their entire budget by a oh, how much boy. have they made okay hold on i i'm sure i'm, I'm sure going it's to the tens of millions I'm of going dollars to the website. i know it was like, hundreds no it's hundreds of millions say, i thought it was like 150 years ago so like millions of dollars at this point three million people have joined the universe yeah whatever sure they have how many of those are still active probably 20 damn um pledge there it is is it is it actually a dead game or you're just memeing no i just 300 can't be 350 you can literally million still 350 350 million dollars oh this is like more than most real like movies like we are now approaching development costs for grand theft auto 5 <laughs> Oh like, my God, there's so many ships. Alpha three point one four is out, guys. Just saying. Oh my God. Alpha three, Alpha three point one four. We're almost there. You know what's you know what's hilarious? Dude. You know what's hilarious? <laughs> there are videos from YouTubers like five years ago going, "This game is still not coming out," and like, "This is taking forever," and they probably have to soon go back and like upload new videos of like. Game still doesn't come out, but we still get clicks from this shit, so we're gonna do an updated video. Amazing. This is fucking is, Oh, there's my ship, remember... though. There's the constellation. The constellation still looks cool as fuck. Too bad I'm never gonna a get lot. To fly they it. have they do have a lot of really cool sh ships in the game now. Yeah, dude, my constellation was fucking cool. Wow, look uh, at the, uh what are they still featuring this trailer from like five years ago on their website? <laughs> Probably they haven't made any new fucking content for the sh for the shit for you know. It's it's fucking nuts. I I like. This is why you don't crowdfund shit. This is the example right here. <laughs> like, oh, it's painful. Man, you know it's painful. <laughs> what? Watching the Pokemon community tear itself apart, man. <laughs> Yo, the community oh. knows what they're doing this time. For the first time in a while, after years and years of just just telling Game Freak that it's it's fine, it's fine. Give me the same DS game, just upscale it this time. <laughs> Finally, the Pokemon oh, fans shit. riot over something real because I'm I'm actually part part of this riot this time. So, <laughs> so Pokemon Go, a game about. Going outside and exploring and meeting up your friends to fight gym battles and raid bosses and all that other bullshit. 
Um, during COVID times, they don't really want people lumping up together. So what they did is they decided to expand the range at which you can interact with stuff like Pokestops and gyms and whatnot. And it was really convenient because it meant that I no longer had to go like inside of the sandwich shop near me. I could just go near it. Or I didn't have to go literally, but like literally into the Wegmans. I could swipe as I passed by. It was really nice and convenient. Got to stay away from people during the pandemic. Um, Niantic doesn't like this. They don't like that the idea that you can walk up to a store, spin the Pokestop, and walk away is a thing. Because the way they're starting to make money now is sponsored Pokestops. With the idea being, you got to really go into that Starbucks if you want to spin to get your Pokeballs for today. Wow. And the community is just like, yo, A, pandemic's not over, and B, what was so bad about the way it was? Like, are you really convinced that every single day, because Pokemon Go wants you to spin at least one stop every single day. Do you think every day I'm going to go to a store that sponsored you and buy something from them every single day because I want to spin a Pokestop? Absolutely not. And for some reason, their marketing team is convinced that, like, this is what people will do. So they had, they had to reduce this, the range of the Pokestops which I don't know if it's true or not, but at least from my experience, the range feels smaller than it did pre-pandemic. Like, I used to occasionally be able to swipe at the store next to my gym. Now I have to literally be hugging the wall of my gym to, to be close enough to swipe. So, damn. I don't know what they're doing. It's making me less enthusiastic about Pokemon Go. I already didn't play it very regularly. I'd open it maybe once a week at this point. Mostly just because there was a stop near my gym. But, and by gym, I mean like an actual working out gym, not a Pokemon gym. Um, Why not both? Well, unfortunately, my gym isn't a gym. My gym is next to a stop. Anyway, besides the point, all my community decides, you know, we, we're going we're gonna to prove to them that we're not having this. No one signed in on it. And I think it was like Monday or maybe it was Friday last week. The point is, enough people did this that Niantic had to make a response. And they said, we are forming a team to investigate the situation. And it's like, thank you. You decided to say we're not going to address it until everyone doesn't care in two months. So... Tensions between the Pokemon Go community and Niantic are pretty high right now, and Niantic is just kind of walking away from it. Really Incredible. sucks. This... I mean, it seems like the trend lately. I, I feel like we shouldn't be surprised by stuff like this anymore. Yeah, I know. Just reporting on the goings-on of the Pokemon community, because as it is... <laughs> As it is, they're already still really butthurt that Pokemon Unite is blatantly pay to win, at least for the first couple months. Once everyone yeah. has enough time, it's free to play, they'll eventually catch up. But Pokemon's in this weird spot where it's just everything is wrong right now. And to make it even worse, we got Legends coming up pretty soon, which is going to be the, the make or break what is Game Freak doing moment. And something tells me they're, gonna, they're not going to make it. They're going to break is, it. When is that one coming out? I think it's holidays or January. Ooh. I don't know, man. Oh, no, that one's January 28th. I think Diamond and Pearl is sooner, though. Which, one of my buddies is getting it day of, so I'm going to basically just go over and watch him play and see if it is even reasonable. All right, Diamond and Pearl is on November 19th. That one's creeping up on us. But yeah, we got till next year before Legends destroys Game Freak. Uh, I mean, I mean, <laughs> redeems Game Freak. I mean, yeah, true. True. <laughs> we'll see. It's, well, it is what it is. Sorry, Game Freak. It was good while it lasted. Right. That no, was, was it though. It was, was it though? I, you know what? I have. <laughs> all right. Listen. No matter what Pokemon is today, I have very fond memories of it, and that means a lot to me. Oh and no! It I, sucks that they suck. I still love Pokemon. <laughs> playing playing through Radical Red is is reminding me what I love about Pokemon. And it's just, I need someone else to develop the game, is what I love about this. Yeah. Head died. Now my mic is back. Wow, thank goodness. There we go. Oh, hello. Um, I was going to say, after the podcast, Freeman's going to hopefully stream some more Pokemon Radical Red. Maybe, because, if I don't get pulled into Guild Wars 2, I'll definitely I've see been, if we can uh, finally kill Faulkner. I've been having fun watching Freeman and watching him struggle to kill Faulkner last night. It was pretty hilarious. So. Dude, these boss battles are literal actual boss battles. <laughs> I, I've never played a Pokemon game like this. This is phenomenal. Um, but you know what else is phenomenal? A surprise reveal. So, uh, did anyone else find this news out, like, right before the podcast? Because this was just, like, hours uh, old. 
Yeah, I saw I was yeah. waiting for you guys, but I was like, do we do we want to talk about this? I'm like, nah, there's I no way I don't care about it. But... <laughs> the fact that Idris Elba is going to play Knuckles in the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog movie is... <laughs> nah, it makes sense. Because Knuckles and is why? black. There we go. It's Only true. Tyler can say that. Knuckles it, is black. Dude. Can, can confirm. <laughs> can well, confirm. I don't... I, I just I just don't see Knuckles as... Like, I feel like the accent's going to, like, not... I guess he doesn't have to do... Like, he does not... He can do an American accent or whatever. I was going to say, just, I don't know if I would have casted Idris, Idris Elba, though. Elba. <laughs> the amount like, of comments that it, it on Reddit like that are like... It seems like a strange pick. Like, the amount of comments on Reddit that are like, you could have given me a thousand guesses and I would have never guessed Idris yes. Elba for Knuckles. And there's no <laughs> way he's hurting. Surprise, it's not a bad one. He's not hurting Surprise to jobs, be sure, but it won't just like... <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Yo, Weird. you know what? Maybe Idris Elba just really fucking likes Knuckles, all right? And he's like, yo, I want to do this. Can we do this? And here we are. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked. And, and you know what? It'll, it would, if, I hope that's the case, because generally when that's the case, things turn out pretty well, because they care about the project. As long as... It's, as long it's, as the animation <laughs> team doesn't do, get creative with the character designs again, it'll <laughs> yeah. be good. Don't be creative. <laughs> they were creative 20 years ago when they made them. It's fine. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you don't have to fix what ain't broken. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Do, is there a date on uh, the second Sonic movie? It did. Uh, did you guys I even watch sure the we don't first care. one? Nope. Still haven't seen no, the first one. No, still haven't I... watched it. <laughs> April 8th of 2022. Curious. You know, I might watch a movie with Knuckles in it, and if there's and if Shadow's in it, it'll be even better. There's no is Shadow actually in this movie. I have no idea, but I hope so. Oh my goodness! You mean Edgy you know, the Hedgy? Yes. <laughs> Al yes. the Edge. Yes, him. <laughs> the Edgy Hedgy himself. But uh, no, that he'll be that'll be uh that'll be Sonic Three. He'll be like a silhouette at the end of uh at the end of this movie. That's how we get there, because Sonic and Sega. I really wish they would call this movie Sonic and Knuckles. Right? That's a good how, throw there. I mean, how they long might before still... we get Tails? Wasn't Tails, like, in a teaser at the end of the last one? Yeah. The okay. end of the first one. Okay. That's oh, was It's probably going to be all three of them in the movie. I didn't, I didn't watch it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, sorry. Spoiler alert. Too late. Oh, Tails no. in the Sonic franchise. You thought you'd get through some Sonic media without one of Sonic friends also coming along for the ride? Nice joke. Anyway. 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 Do, you want, do we want to talk about the not nice joke? Oh, God. I don't... Yeah, this is a great joke. Hey, I actually you thought you joke is on the story. I, so, I, I fucked up that transition. We're talking about Splitgate. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> What is this? Split I haven't actually gate. heard this term. Split well, you never played is... Halo before? <laughs> what? Come on. Okay. Splitgate is an indie game developed by like a team of four people that's been out on Steam for years. A couple now. Of years now, yeah. And it is Halo with portals. And I can literally not get more succinct in my description than that. Yeah, I mean that's that's really what it is. Like to the to the point where I like if they wanted to, they could probably sue for the weapon design. Hold on. Their their <laughs> website is literally splitgate pipe halo meets portal in quotes pipe free to play PvP FPS is their website. That's yeah, what it says on Correct. Cause that's exactly what it is. And it's a very good game. Because, I mean, like, they emulated Halo. There's no way that they could have fucked it up. And then they added portals. It's even better. Have fun getting on it, though. <laughs> now, <laughs> it's like a 20-minute queue to play this game. They aver they were averaging, for the last two years, 250 players. And in, like, the last five days, they have held a concurrent, like, 60,000. Wow. And, like... A bunch of people from the Warzone community have been uh, checking it out and, like, streaming it and stuff. And uh, it's really cool to see. Like, 
and it's a very fun game and if you it's free so you should play it like if you're looking for a, like a good arena shooter with portals split gate go play it i might give it a try yeah once the um, servers come back online <laughs> yeah i mean you'll just have to get used to the queue times so i'm <laughs> sure i'm sure they're working i'm sure they're working diligently to get that fixed yeah, like, I mean they they kind of had the uh, Pokemon Go almost a circle back effect where it was super not popular, and then all of a sudden overnight it was popular. For for do we want to talk about why it is popular now, Aiden? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean hey, you know you know you know you know the story the thing about Activision and you know how they're all rapists and shit. Yeah, yeah, we yeah we all know that. <laughs> Uh, they, yeah, a good basically that. A, a good portion of uh a lot of the increase in uh Splitgate and Apex lately is just like people boycotting Activision Blizzard. <laughs> I didn't think it would be as serious as it was, but like a lot of people are actually pissed and like they are just not playing these games anymore. But it's good because Splitgate is a good game, and you should <laughs> you should play good games. Unrelated, unlike other multi-dollar companies that we know. <laughs> but yeah, multi-dollar companies. Multi-dollar companies. Speaking of multi-dollar, multinational companies, I don't. Oh know. no, I'm so completely caught off guard that I don't have my noise suppressor turned off, so I can do my intro to the weed shit. <laughs> That's really quiet. Think. Oh no! Really? We, heard anyone... it. we could hear it. Why didn't anyone say anything earlier when I was doing the sound it test? It was fine earlier. The sound test well, was I said it. louder. I said it. I'm... Is it because I'm yelling? Like if I do it with without any That's yelling, yeah, there there you go. Go. Uh, I was just screaming there over you. it like some kind of weeb shit. Anyway, um, nice and short this week. We're five to six weeks in the season, uh, so everything is hitting its stride. You're finding out what's good, what's bad. I am unfortunately behind on everything, so I can't give any advice on that front. Womp womp. But but I can talk about the new announcements for stuff that is not necessarily next season, but coming out within the next six months or so. So, first and foremost, the biggest news we got is the JoJo Part 6 poster came out, to which everyone said, oh man, that's it. And then 24 hours later, bam, the trailer comes out. Um, but to everyone's surprise, Netflix released the trailer because they, in Japan, will now have it a month before it airs on TV. And everyone's panicking because they're like, uh-oh. Is this show going to be like a Netflix jail for streaming? Is Netflix going to like only have episode one early? What's going on? All I know is JoJo Part 6 is happening. I'm very excited. Jolene sounds amazing. We get to see new character designs for older characters like JoJo from Part 3 is back in it. Wait, Free, are you telling me you didn't recognize the voice actress? Hmm? You didn't recognize the voice actress? <laughs> so, unfortunately, her only like big... I guess the main character role prior to this was she played the main character in How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift. Yeah. And she's playing a very different character. Like, she was playing a bubbly high school girl who wants to work out in that show. This one, she's playing a convicted criminal in an all-women's correctional facility, except they have stands, and they're trying to break out or something. I don't know. I don't read the manga, so I don't know the, I don't know the plot synopsis. Yeah, but she aura aura pretty good. <laughs> yes, I was, so, I was so happy to hear it. Especially because... Every time they do a JoJo trailer, the trailer uses part of the song that they use when the JoJo of the season beats up the main villains all the time. So we got our little sneak peek at that song. So very excited. Just need the release date, which I don't think they posted. But a trailer means it's happening. Year? It's probably next year. Let me just double check this. Because I don't want to inaccurately report news to our viewers. Oh my god, the Wikipedia does absolutely nothing to tell. December 2021 is when it says scheduled. Oh, wow. So we'll see. But I think that's just the Netflix early preview, so it'll probably be January it starts airing. So less than, less than six months, I can wait. So, well, and, assuming it comes here at the same time and isn't oh, in Netflix if, jail for like if two If this years. is a Netflix jail show, I'm going to strangle people. Like, this is... Like, Did Luigi you... posted the, the piracy meme this morning about our next topic, but if JoJo's in Netflix jail, oh boy, I'll be king of the pirates. Uh, I guess we should talk about uh, the main weeb news. Oh, poor Jumon. Uh, Kylie, you sound like you're trying to say something? Oh, sorry. Oh, 
Uh, wait, I did, and now I legitimately JoJo. forgot. JoJo? Uh, You're watching JoJo? JoJo? No, I mean, Ann and I are trying, trying to watch, to watch JoJo. JoJo. Yep. But there's a there's a, uh, a very difficult to work with third party involved. <laughs> yeah. oh, I forget what what part are you guys up to? Uh, part four. Yeah. Like roughly uh, how far? The, in one, on. the one where they fuck up the color palette. Oh no no! You gotta be way more serious. specific. No, we just watched the episode with uh, Ratatouille, literally. Wait, the one with the chef or the one with the rat? The chef. Yeah, the chef. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Right, yeah, the so show. there's a rat later. It's season four. Oh, whatever. Oh, where he punches the spaghetti? Yeah. That was the yeah. greatest meme of all time. <laughs> that episode is pretty great. It, right. it was very JoJo, that episode. It was yes. like, you know, there's some serious shit going on. And it's part, like, part four has some of the best comedy part, of the whole, the whole series. It... it, it it was one of the rare instances in the show where you're introduced to what you think is like a malevolent actor and he's just a cool dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, cause everybody else in the show that they do that to, it's like, yeah, that's the bad guy. Was, he's just a dude that likes making people feel better with his food. That's what I love about JoJo Part 4. Everyone gets introduced to the villain, and you're always like, is that the villain? Until the real villain gets introduced, and you know without a, like, without a shadow of a doubt, that guy is the villain. So it's it's a weird season. I'm hoping you guys like the second half of it. Uh, I mean, I like it so far. Uh, some of the shit's been a little disturbing. I didn't like the manga artist episode. Oh, his quirk is weird. It kind of sucks that the his author... quirk? You mean his stand? What did I say, quirk? <laughs> you said quirk. Yeah. So the problem is... It seems, it's the same so, thing. I'm, I'm sorry about this one. So the problem is his stand is a quirk. So instead of everyone else's where, like, your stand is this, like, physical manifestation next to you, his stand's ability is to make your face into paper where he can read it and draw shit into oh, it because he's a manga yeah, artist. Oh, yeah, that was so And so, like, I always, think mo I always think more about what he's doing to someone else's face than the actual physical stand, which I don't... I don't remember what it actually looks like. I forgot. It's called Heaven's Door or something? I, I, I don't remember, but what I do remember is how disturbing it is. Unsettling to see it was, yeah. Face open like a book. Oh, I guess his stand does have an actual appearance, but you, like, you never see it because he's always just drawn on people's faces. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Quark stand, same shit. It's his persona. Um, but that's enough for JoJo. Part 6 is going to be very unusual, and I hope people like it. But one of the biggest debates that came out of this, and this happened again with JoJo Part 5, was when they showed off that Jorno was going to wear a pink suit. Everyone's like, what the fuck? Where's the blue suit from that one manga cover? To which Araki, the author, is like, yeah, I, ch I pick a different palette every time they let me do a cover. So I, you know, I don't know what their colors are. So, so when they showed off the character art for the whole gang for the season, I was like, yo, 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 why is that character's hair pink? It's supposed to be blue. And I was like, what are you talking about? It's yellow from this cover. And it just created this civil war of what color should it be? And we've all just come to the agreement. Don't expect any colors out of JoJo because it will be all the colors. I... It was fine. Everything was fine. <laughs> Everything was fine. And then they just decide, like, you know what I think this needs? This needs neon green roads. So, hold on. The, the reason... Actually, no. JoJo Part 4 just has crazy colors everywhere. But the thing with JoJo is the reason everyone has ridiculous colors is every time something serious happens, the palette always swaps, like, directly. So they like to pick colors where they can swap one-to-one -one and it doesn't look jarring on one side or the other, which is why you have, like, Jordan with bright pink in real life, and then he has bright green when shit's getting heavy. Yeah, but I mean, they, they did that in earlier in the earlier seasons, and I think it had more impact when they did it because it was a significant moment happening. And then, like, honestly... I barely, time. like, the color palette is so all over the place. I barely notice when it even happens because, it, it, like, every scene is a different palette. Pretty much. It's colorful so, like, experience. This looks normal to me now. Yeah, but you'll, you'll, like, open up a random scene and you'll be like, why is everyone green? And you're like, oh, it's because it's serious. And then you'll just forget that thought and everything looks, just looks normal at the, from that point on. Yeah. Anyway. All right, we, we can't avoid the inevitable forever. All right, let's not talk about JoJo and start talking about what might be the greatest or worst moment in anime history. We'll find out. But 
Uh, the Funimation Crunchyroll merger has finally gone through. Each company got to make their own press release, and then a... It wasn't their tweeted out one, but Funimation did make a press release saying that their number one priority right now is getting both sets of content onto a unified streaming platform. Not committing to either pulling Crunchyroll content on the Funimation site or putting Funimation content on the Crunchyroll site. All I can hope is that whatever comes out of this is no worse than either of the, the two existing platforms. Please. Please hire a UX designer. Please, just, just <laughs> grab... Funimation, no. you, you went and bought the company Anime Lab and gave them your shitty website. When everyone keeps crying, hey, use Anime Lab's website, a site that you already own because you purchased it and could use it. You know what you should do, Funimation? You should use it. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Because I know, I know the CEO of Funimation, Ken Fukunaga, listen to our podcast every week. Anyway. <laughs> I think this is terrible. This is the, I think this sucks. So I'm I'm cautious. The last time they they like soft merged, it was by far the greatest time for being able to stream anime legally in the United States. Everything got licensed by one or the other. So I have it's hard to it's hard to this. say right now. It's <laughs> it's hard to say right now. I do overall think it's bad, but if we can get to like OG Netflix, you know, when it was just Netflix and not a thousand streaming services, like if they can get enough of everything, having it all in one spot is worth it, I think. Sure, but Netflix pretty early on had a good UI. <laughs> That's and true. Didn't literally That's true. act like shit when you tried to like cast it or, you know, just watch it or oh anything. My- <laughs> I'm trying. Basic I tell you functionality was good. Yeah, this is gonna. Okay, yeah, the app, the app is gonna suck. Um, I was trying. No, to the, 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 the dream, Panic. the dream is that it doesn't. Because, and I'll, I'll let you continue with your follow-up story. Happen. But, but, but with Funimation, for a company that specializes in subtitled anime, they still don't know how to do subtitles on Roku. So, they use built-in closed captioning because they don't know how subtitles work for their own video player. Freeman, even watching it in their own app, it looks like closed captioning, and you can't read shit half the time, cause, like, on the screen, because the closed captioning just blocks it out. First of all, I'm pretty sure if you use it on desktop, it doesn't do that. Yeah, well, guess who was trying to watch uh, Realist Hero by the pool today? Ah, uh, by the pool, living the life of luxury with your closed caption subtitles. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks. We shouldn't have to deal with this in the, the current year. The intro of that show actually puts the names of every character so you remember it on screen on the bottom during the intro, and it's like, can't read who this is because of the shitty subtitles. <laughs> <sighs> who was going to say something before? Um, I, was I, about I, I, would, I was I was talking about Full oh, Metal yeah. Panic and and how when you try to cast the first season of Full Metal Panic, oh it starts episode one of uh, Full Metal uh, Panic Fumo Fu instead. Wait, really? It just jumps to the next season? Uh-huh. <laughs> and I, I was like, I... It was very difficult for me to not immediately uninstall and cancel my app, or cancel my sub. Tyler, what was the show you and Val were watching at my parents' house that you were casting to the TV, and you guys were like casting is such a piece of shit we're not uh, gonna watch this show right at this house it was a cog oh, fuck i think it, a, no, no i thought it was one it wasn't it was a Kaguya. while ago it was something on funimation well yeah obvi- yeah obviously oh, not sorry good. Kaguya I, has season two that's why i was thinking that but yeah no no nah, yeah, we didn't make ago. it there oh my God. this was what months the, ago what the fuck were we watching but either way, it's not like yeah, Crunchyroll is much better at casting. Like, how many times have we been watching something and my phone just starts playing music because, oops, yeah. it disconnected itself from the casting, so you have to close the app and, oh, it's working all of a sudden. You guys want to hear the icing on the cake about the Funimation app? Oh, God. Like, three, three, I think it was like three years ago they stopped doing this, but it, even if you had Funimation Premium, like I did, I paid for it <laughs> monthly, you still had to pay $15 to buy the app. Whoa. Like it wasn't a free app. It's free they're like, now. They're like literally the only people we're going to use are the ones who pay for our subscription. So like, let's make it pay because they'll pay for it. Wow. And it was so garbage. I couldn't believe it. Where does all that so really long... go? Clearly not into developing the app. Absolutely <laughs> not. It goes into DVD rights. Palms. 
It goes into making those collector's edition Blu-ray boxes for Hero Academia. Oh, God. Anyway, speaking of Hero Academia, let me shuffle around the order of the next news, because right now, the Hero Academia movie is out in theaters in Japan, tying in with the current arc of the anime that they shuffled around to make the movie seem like it fit into the plot line. Uh, so Even far, it's going really well. it's non-canon still. Uh, and it's non-canon. Oh, it's they so were... Dumb. I mean, I would prefer they do that than suddenly put a canon arc in a movie that's in Japan only in the middle of an airing season. I mean, sure, that, don't do it that way. But that is just a recipe for disaster. Ever since, ever since Mugen Train, it's like, can you just make shit canon, please? Nah, that was that was a unique one-off. Normal no, show structure dictates. Do it the right way. These... Do it a better way. Well, the, the the reason they did Mugen Train as a movie was because it, it fit the runtime. Sure, do that. And what? The problem is the last we time here done... in had had an arc that would fit the movie runtime, it would have been the whole overhaul arc. And Untrue. I don't know. The entire class 1A versus B arc could have been a movie. You would have done that as a movie, though? It's, I'm not saying you would have wasted time on that shit, but you could have cut it down to be the length of a movie. I'm just saying, like, you could have okay, figured. The, so the last arc that would have worked as a movie, because it's not the gentle criminal arc, was the overhaul arc. So I, and I sure, don't know if that would have been, been better sick. as a movie. Imagine if that final fight against Overhaul had even more budget. It already looked great. Imagine if it had an even sicker movie budget. I wonder. Hell, imagine if you'd gone all the way back to like the uh, uh, the all for one original reveal arc thing, whatever. I don't know. That like the, you could have done it. All I'm saying is we don't have to waste time with these shitty non-canon movies, even though they make so much money. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if I'd prefer it as a movie though. Like. When so watching, watching this, is, I don't want to tie this back to Mugen Train, but it always fucking happens. Yeah. We talk about anime movies with Mugen Train. It was weird because we're watching it and it felt like I was watching like six episodes of a show and they cut out the opening, they cut out the ending. Like especially the transition from the train to the non-train part of the movie, mm -hmm. it it felt like I just missed the commercial break and we're on the next episode. I feel like if you in an alternate universe where Mugen Train was a quarter like a multi-episode arc you would easily say this could have never been a movie I, yes I, because i thought because i because I, I viewed it as two separate parts of that arc and i didn't like even watching the movie i still can't help but feel like it's two separate pieces duct taped together damn and i probably would have felt that way after watching it on tv like i was like you wouldn't be able to combine those two into a movie but I'm also unique in that. I don't. I don't believe this is a popular opinion. This is just my shitty take. So the movie came out in Japan, and it's making some money. Yes, it's not making it's, it's not making Mugen Train money, but it's. I believe it's doing better than the last year Academia movie. So if they keep which making these, like, I'm gonna, I'm still gonna keep watching these crazy oh, animation sequences, which totally. is the only reason we're here. I was gonna say, can I? Flip side though, this season <laughs> has really. <laughs> I know it's the best fucking season I've ever watched. Like steam, pretty hard. Holy oh. shit! This is peak shonen. Peak shonen. Everyone's got powers and just nothing's happening. Can I just? Yeah, I was gonna say like, feel that. I know. Yep. I don't. It's funny because everyone's always like, "Oh my god, you're such a hater if you just don't like something as popular as my hero." But like, actually, this season is like, outside of a couple cool moments, this is a, such a snooze fest dealing with this fucking class one A one B shit and all this. Yeah, stuff. tell me about it. Well, hold up. The class one A B shit has been over for two months. The problem is that they took they took an arc that's supposed to be the lighthearted relief arc after the hard hitting arc, and they put it before the hard hitting arc to promote the movie. So we have a problem of pacing that the manga didn't have. Where after this shitty high school stuff, we had hard hitting real world villain crap, and then it came back to okay, let's see what Deku's gonna do while this is happening, and they swapped the order. So now we just went from what's Deku doing in the high school to what's Deku doing out of high school. And we still haven't seen the what is the uh, what is like the overarching threat in the plot line because they're they're holding that arc from us and it should be happening soon. I don't know. I'm actually two episodes behind, but Spoilers. hopefully it reduces. Nothing related to that has happened. You gotta be fucking kidding me! If they Nothing split the villain still. arc in half, <sighs> all for a movie, all for this fucking movie. Yes, y'all thought I was tripping at the start of this fucking. Season. No, 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 no. Look, I. You look. I, I said you immediately didn't like that. I was fine with it for a little, and now we're in this endeavor training arc, and it's a cool arc. 
but after the slow shit that no one cares about of the class 1a 1b stuff having another slow mean nothing arc is like putting me to fucking sleep watching my hero <laughs> yeah you guys want to hear a hot take no, yeah, I, actually I, was, I was talking about this with a bunch of manga readers on Friday who all don't like where Hero Academia ended up going. And we were, someone said, when was it, when was the last time you thought Hero Academia was good? And I sat there, I'm like, honestly, United States of Smash was the last time I was like genuinely engaged in this series. Everything um, else has just been a slow, a slow man, decline. Really? Like overall it wasn't bad, but it was like, I wasn't as involved in it. And then Gentle Criminal, I was less involved. And it's just every arc after that, I just haven't been engaged. And I feel like it's been losing steam since. Maybe it's and just it needs of the, that next arc. Maybe it's just because of the fight hype, but I really liked the whole Endeavor picking the torch up thing from the end of the last season, or the oh, like, first half. Like I, re I, remember, I remember specifically what our group thought. Like Going into that episode, all of us were like, damn, this season sucks. And then we had one good episode, and all of us were like, man, that was amazing. Yeah. And it's without that one episode, I don't think season four was all that. Yeah, no. It, like, no, I'm not like it ended was, strong, but... but without that, it was just... Sure, but it All ended strong, climb. which is still which is still something. Like this season, I think it's fair to say this season is lower than season four ever was. Like I liked Gentle Criminal more than what's happening now, and the one A one B shit. Yeah, ultimately, if you you cut seven minutes of uh, content out of the season, and that's the only like important shit to show anyone. Like there has like, been that's, stuff. That's in a lot. Okay, right so now. you guys are too behind. There is cool, really cool, like character development stuff, with, like Endeavor and his family and Deku and Bakugo. That's it's good stuff. But like, like I said, it's good moments. But after, after so much stuff of like, who cares what the other kids are doing at internships? I don't care. Just make any progress on anything that matters at all. Oh shit. Yeah, it's not happening this season. Anyway, it's not like this show is not going to get so finished sad. though. Like this is going to finish. They're going to finish this manga a million percent. I mean, given that the manga is going to end in the next year and a half, it's it's a question of whether they'll give it the food wars treatment and keep going. Uh, it depends on how how popular it finishes at. Speaking of food wars, do you want to just transition to your other? Yeah, thing? I'll do the other one. So so this one's <laughs> was going to be really minor. But Crunchyroll announced that they're getting both the Food Wars OVAs they hadn't had for the longest time, as well as the Q. I think they're OADs, not OVAs, but same, same general format. Um, and for anyone who loves these franchises, I'm not sure how important the Q OVAs are, but the Food Wars ones are very important. For anyone who watched Season 2 of Food Wars, and they just have casual flashbacks that time that Soma met all of the Elite Ten, yeah, guess what that meeting happened what? in? What? That's right. It happened in the OVA that came out between Season 1 and Season 2 that didn't release on any streaming platforms in the U.S., so you had to go pirate the fan-subbed version online like I did. Man, I never thought I'd ever watch Food Wars content ever again, but I would watch old Food Wars content. That's right, because <laughs> these, these OVAs were like the canon one-off chapters that happened between <laughs> Season 1 and 2. So, or yeah. Anyway, those Why are on Crunchyroll now. Why go enjoy them. This is and this is early Food Wars before it That's got. That's what I'm saying. That's pretty why I, shitty. I would go back and watch old new Food War, new old Food Wars. That's the word. New old Food um, Wars. I'm gonna say something. Oh boy. That hurts. Hot take. Let's go. Oh, let's yeah. go. I am as disappointed in Food Wars as I was disappointed in Game of Thrones. I was Ouch. so invested uh, in. That food seems Wars. a little much, but I get the sentiment. No, like, be like. Yes, it was Mimi, but all of, like, the the cooking was, like, a, it was a thing. It was a real thing. And then we got to a point where it's, like, it, you, it barely comes up. Like, yeah. you literally lost the plot of your own show. I think it was the, the, the end of the versus Central arc. Like, that whole, we're in a stadium, let's cook, where no one's cooking. That was... Yeah. For me, that was the Game of Thrones season where it's just like, oh my god, this is like crushing to watch. Like, what happened? But then we yeah. got to like the end. We got to the fifth play, the last season. And I went in knowing, like, not only has this show just been garbage for a season, it's adapting an, an arc that straight up killed the manga with how bad it was. So I my I was ready for absolute garbage, and that's what we got. So, <laughs> so like, in terms of what I was disappointed by, like, Game of Thrones and, like, season four of uh, Food Wars, pretty neck and neck. But season five, I knew it was just going to be awful, so I was not as disappointed as Game of Thrones. Yeah, despite that's, it being that's fair. equally as bad. Yeah, that's fair. 
All right. And then I'll, I'll close out the weeb shit. Last, last bit of information. We got the trailer for the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie. They confirmed it's coming out the night before Christmas in Japan. Uh, given the popularity, we're probably going to get it around here, maybe March well, in the U.S. Uh, it depends I just on who can't right. you, mean, you mean Christmas Day? Yeah, that's... Wait, are, hmm? this year or next year? Oh, no, no, no. This year. Oh. Mean, it's coming out... Day. He's saying it's coming out Christmas Day on the internet. It's coming out Christmas oh. Day. <laughs> Uh, I don't um, know. I don't know what this uh, this whole we might get it. You know, March shit. Um, oh, actually, it's collectible. Viz Media owns the distribution rights for it. And I don't know how well, good they next are about Christmas the for us. Releases. Let's go. Hopefully. Hope what? Like hopefully it come. Like we might not get a theatrical release because it's Viz Media. It might be like oh. it comes out on Blu-ray next Christmas. Oh <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying even worse than I was saying. Look, oh, Viz, like I love Viz Media. They produce solid dubs, but at the same time, like they're Fuck not them. the kings of getting their content out there that oh, fast. My God. Like it took them two years to get JoJo DVDs. <laughs> it was insane. I don't know what the fuck they were doing. How, anyway, how do we live in this world still? Okay, like honestly, like we, no, we just, uh, you know what? No, 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 forget it. I'm not. Sorry, I'm not trying to lead us down this path. We've talked about this too many times about how much everyone sucks at this. Yeah, it's it's absolutely awful. Just like the rest. Of the weeb shit. There we go. Dude, you, know, is, you know what's... Is this awful, Freeman? Is this thing that you've played awful? Oh, what? Astral Chain? Yeah. So, first things first. I think I've already told everyone in this group, but I need our listeners to understand this. I started playing Astral Chain, and the first thing I noticed when playing is just this future cyberpunk aesthetic. We're playing as cops. All I could think of was the first campaign we played where tyler was running it and we were basically just playing police in neon miami for a few sessions so <laughs> all i could think of was that and then suddenly they introduced me to the you know press press the plus button opens this like 3d hud view where you can see through walls and shit i'm like wow you like everything is hidden in this menu and what is this system called the iris the same name <laughs> tyler was using for the same technology in his universe so i was so taken aback by how i'm literally just playing the tyler campaign video game but overall, right. very fun so far. Mechanics are super wonky. I'm finally getting the hand of controlling both you and your stand at the same time. Um, I don't know what the actual thing is called, but it's basically a stand. So far, plot's pretty JRPG. Um, overall, fun gameplay. I like it. Uh, it should This is one of those games that I think you can beat in like 30 hours, so I shouldn't tie me up from eventually returning to Witcher 3 for too long. Uh, but overall, pretty good start to the game. Oh, my! The only one who has watched played stuff this week besides the I last one. one thing um, on here. So, I'll be I'll be honest. I haven't been able to see all the show notes for some reason. Is it doing it for you, where you try to open it up and it just is stuck on like the word logo or something? No, it's uh the only thing I see on it are from Steam Deck to Splitgate. Oh no, Tyler, go. Oh, you're on the wrong one. I ones. had to make. That's what I was saying in the chat earlier. I had to make a copy oh. because Freeman couldn't get in. Freeman like literally oh, couldn't get into the show notes, so I made a second one as a take see. two of the show notes. I see, I see, I see. So, so. Well, gotcha. while All right, you so... potentially want to add watched and played, go ahead, Freeman. All right, I'll I'll wrap up the three shows I started this uh, this fine anime season. First one, Aquatope on the White Sands. Uh, this falls in the genre of shows made by PA Works about adults doing actual real jobs. Uh, so far, they've done a couple really good ones, like Shirobaka was great. The movie's out in theaters today. It's Sorry, too late warning. Almost but, went I, mean, to go, to go see I almost it. went to go see it today, but um, I decided I would rather just watch it in the, in the comfort of my own home. This movie is actually longer than two hours. I didn't realize this. Um, wow. We're going to the Blu-rays on that one. But they're doing one called Aquatope on the White Sands, which seems to be a show about trying to save an aquarium that's going to go out of business. Uh, overall, very strong first two episodes. Animation is solid. Uh, we'll see if they can keep the audience engaged for its whole run. I think this is a 20-episode show. Um, Did Gigook reference in his video, like, hopefully this is a PA work show that stays good? Yeah, so I the problem is he pulled out literally the only two PA work shows that didn't work out. Like, they have a <laughs> long history of really good, well-animated shows. And he picked out two that were only bad because they were by a specific writer who's not working on this. So I have confidence in it. Uh, the next two I have way less confidence on. Girlfriend, Girlfriend. I, like, I went into it knowing this is the trash show of the season. This is the domestic girlfriend. This is the I shaved and brought home a high school girl show of the season. So what's it about? 
Dude in high school has a girlfriend, and they are in a loving relationship until this guy gets confessed to by this very cute first year. And he's like, well, I don't know what to do. Like, I absolutely cannot cheat on my girlfriend. But at the same time, you're adorable, and I'd hate to break your heart. Let's ask my girlfriend what she thinks. So he proposes a harem. <laughs> and the girl just confessed to him. was like, well, it's either I'm in this harem or I don't get to be with the guy I like, so I'm all for it. And his girlfriend was like, what the fuck is going on right now? But she, at the same time, she doesn't say no. So he invites them both to come over to his house, which becomes them staying over the night. And it's just, it's just anime bullshit. It's, that's all this is. It's just, I can't believe what I'm watching where this main character is just proposing three ways randomly throughout the episode. It's something. I, something. I, I've struggled, I've struggled to start episode two like twice now. Like, I don't know if I'm going to watch the show. It might just be, it might just be too stupid, but at the same time, like, it is hilarious if you don't take it seriously. Uh, and then the last anime, I'm really upset about this one. Uh, Jahisama will not be defeated. I was excited for this because it seemed like the manga was full of meme material. Uh, but it seems like the anime team hasn't really captured that magic. I've watched the first two episodes, like, day they come out. And it's like, it's trying to be funny, and just none of the jokes are funny at all. And they're just way too repetitive. Oh, no. So, I'm disappointed. It is still a cute anime grill, so I want to see if there's more funny meme pics of her. But other than that, the show is, like, almost not worth recommending, which I'm really pissed about. Because this was supposed to be, like, the big one of the season. So, very upset. Yeah. Yeah, um, remember when the season started, you were like, oh, the real season doesn't start for like two extra weeks because Jay Hisama starts two weeks later. Dude, I was not the only one with that sentiment, and we're all feeling the burn on this. Like, this is just feels very mediocre, and it's upsetting because the show that it's a mediocre copy of is getting a season two. I forgot to put it on here, but um, oh, Zaki Chan right? wants to hang out. Oh. Literally, same voice actress playing the same character in the same synopsis, except it's not a reverse he isekai. It's, I, we're getting to season two. Anyway, I'm done talking about anime shit. Someone else wants to talk about some real, so, real television programming. I mentioned it last time, but uh, two weekends ago was uh, Val and I's second wedding and our uh, real honeymoon to Barbados. Um, Barbados, other, otherwise Barbados. Um, <laughs> um, while we were there, we kept up on our shows, other than the ones that we could, other than... Uh, Val's Vampire Boys and Vanitas because Funimation is not stream does not work in Barbados. Period. You cannot access Funimation in Barbados. That's right, North America only. Um, so we were like, oh, we're caught up on our anime. What do we want to watch when we're just chilling at night? And we finally watched Loki. We had watched one episode weeks ago, um, and it was just like, okay, let's just sit down and actually finish this thing. Man, this show's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Loki is a weird one. Um, I'm trying to... I feel like... It just goes so weird... That it is, like, almost too out there for me. But I'm. But it is cool how, like, out there it is. And clearly they're either setting... They said there's a season two coming. Um... And it does do some really interesting stuff, and it's good. The action's good. A lot of the concepts are cool. But it almost feels like we're... Tyler, did you finish the show? I did not. How far did you get? Two minutes. Wait, you didn't... I thought you watched an episode or two. Nope. I watched two minutes. Really? Yeah. It was that good that you watched two minutes and said, that's it, I'm done, I've seen enough. How did you feel about those two minutes? Uh, Nothing, because I, what happened? I started it, and then I was like, oh shit, I have to do something, and then I closed it, and I never got Ah, back to it. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, Yeah. It's good, It's, it's fun, it's like, I don't even want to say it's like a buddy cop movie, it's... I mean, you guys have seen the trailers and stuff with, um, oh my god, why can't I remember his name? Not Tom Hiddleston, the other guy. Uh, uh, wow, guy. Yes, Owen Wilson. Um, Owen Wilson. (laughs) Yeah, uh, he's, he's really good in it. He actually has a lot of really funny lines, um, 
I'm interested to see more. It was good. It was another good Marvel show. I think... I kind of think WandaVision was still the best one. That might also just be because it was the first. But, like, Tal, you finished Falcon Winter Soldier, at least, right? We talked about that a while ago. Yeah, I finished that. That was, like, good, but... I don't know. Maybe it's because these shows are both shorter. They're both six episodes instead of the eight that uh, WandaVision had. To kind of flesh things out a little more. Or it, maybe it's just the strong theming of WandaVision versus all these episodes, but I don't know. Loki especially feels like it's like, okay, we're just going to go so far out there that it's... Okay, tell me if this makes sense to you guys. Sometimes in fiction, they go so far out places that it's hard to come back and not think, oh, this insane other shit is happening right now. Oh, like when they try and do realistic stuff in these universes? Like, thinking back on Falcon and Winter Soldier and being like, the stuff that the Loki show has in it, like, why does this matter? Like, it's hard to... It, it retroactively is like, I almost give less of a shit. <laughs> the universe yeah. gets a little bit... Just a little bit too big. Like... I mean, Tyler, you guys have even seen from the trailer. The the trailers about of Loki, the Loki show are about Loki gets arrested after the end of a timeline split in uh endgame and yeah i caught up to, i saw there's the that time part. there's the time police like yeah the spoilers there's time travel involved and when you do time travel tyler doesn't tends... get interested no, no, time police. Fair. but like Thanks. as soon as time travel happens it's like oh how do we what do we do about the furthest reaches of time and like what do we do about split timelines and shit and it's like some of the some of the questions there are like when we're talking about time like does it matter that falcon became captain america like <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to take away from anything and you need that on the ground stuff but i feel like we're heading toward like thanos was big but he wasn't like you know what i mean thanos what? wasn't a concept thanos was just a tough guy who had cool stones and there was magic but there was never like Thanos. Sounds is... like you're downplaying it hella hard. What? I mean, I guess. No, what? What do you mean? That he was that he was just a badass guy with stones, but like no, 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 no. But like they built it up over years and years and years and everything. Yeah. And now in the Loki show, in six episodes, we're like traveling to the reaches of time. Like. That's or like dealing with literally dozens of parallel universes. Yeah, they're dealing. They're they're doing the same shit that Marvel's doing. I've said it before. I'm gonna get very wait, disinterested. Hold, wait, you said Lo like Marvel comics, Marvel oh, comics. Oh, I mean, gotcha. Like they're literally doing the same playbook that Marvel comics is doing. I mean, and like comics just annoying. do this. This is what comics do. Well, you know, this like, is what Marvel hey, Comics and D, like Marvel and D, DC do. and Marvel, which anybody it, it, the your, for your for your average layman, those are the only two that they they definitely know Marvel. They might not even know DC. Yeah, like, yo, this is how all Marvel shit is. I know and, some of you guys already read comics, but like, if you don't, just just read Image Comics. You're, yep. You won't be disappointed. There's a lot of bangers or, out there from the image. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you want to get into some manga shit. But I mean, like, Marvel has some good stuff. But, like, so here's the thing, right? Um, I took my friend Steve to my comic shop. Uh, and I think I told you, Aiden, uh, that I took Steve there. But, like... He was asking me in the comic book shop owner, he was like, yo, but I want to know where to start. Like, I want to start from the beginning. And the comic book shop owner is like, yo, like, Which if one? you want to start from the beginning, like, number one, there's like a thousand beginnings. Number two, <laughs> like, he's like, well, I want to start like Spider-Man. I like Spider-Man. He's like, oh, so you want Spider-Man like 1967 Spider-Man. Uh. He's like, well, no. He's like, yeah, that's what I thought. Like, see, <laughs> here with comics... Really, you just kind of pick a story, and you just read it. <laughs> like, there's no, it's not a good idea to like try to pick a beginning. Like, 
Yeah, like you could do that if you wanted to, but it's the most daunting task you'll ever undertake. So I do want to. I it's funny enough. I'll actually agree with your shop owner because, um, I, I, I mean, obviously everyone knows Star Wars, ha ha ha. But when the first, I think I've said on the podcast or something before. I'm sure over the years. I started with the middle, like the second book in a sub series in Star Wars books, and I just gr- kind of spidered out from there. Like in the old Star Wars expanded universe, like where are you supposed to start? I don't know. I w- I don't know where I'd tell people to start. I'd tell people what books are good and just say, "Hey, read those," and then you'll care enough to read some of the bad shit. Yeah, I read a couple of the random expanded universe ones, and it always felt like they gave you enough info that you can get by without exactly reading too many of the others. Star Wars works to some very basic extent. You can read almost any Star Wars book, and like I said, I started on book two of a nine book series, the X Wing series. Yeah, but even even with like a pro- like, I wouldn't say it's a problem, but like it's just a product of like just how things go. Like they've yeah. had these heroes. For going on 50 plus years now. It's the problem of you can't keep them at the same level forever, but there's also levels where it's like, this is dumb. Yeah. It's so it's like version of a stat squish. Yeah, you just have to like just pick a story. Like, like so we just ended up like recommending stories that like we thought Would he might like. Read. Yeah. And that's like that's all it really. I mean, that's what I do. Like, if I'm not following a, a series, I'll just go back and be like, okay, I heard this was good. I'm just gonna read this. Like that's what I did. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's what I did for a lot of shit. Honestly, like like all the Batman stuff that I learned. Like I just read like the bangers. I did like I didn't read all the detective comics. I didn't read like all the other spinoff shit that the Batman has. There's like at least ten. 12 different Batman comics out right now, believe it or not. It's pretty insane. Um, but I was just like, yeah, I'm just going to pick the good ones. Uh, like, the one with where Bane fucking broke Batman. Actually, one of the greatest stories ever. Still but, uh, referenced all the time. Still referenced all the time. The problem is, or the best part, I think, like, the problem is, no one knows how Bane actually did it. Like, in... Like, he just... Like, Batman just kind of got, like, outplayed. But, like, in the comics, he got, like, perfect victory. It was actually pretty great. But I won't go into that. You guys should just read it for yourselves. Okay. Yeah. Or Val will. I should recommend it to (laughs) Val, but, you know, (laughs) she ain't gonna read it. She has too big of a backlog right now. To be fair, on the honeymoon, as Tyler will knows... She made progress. She read two whole books, including finally finishing Peace Talks and starting Battlegrounds, so she's almost caught up on Dresden, finally. She is, and I'm very glad about that. We can finally make references in front of people, because Leslie's never going to fucking read <laughs> No, she's never going <laughs> to. Who's next for stuff? I can't edit the document, by the way. Uh, It's fine, it's fine. Do you, ha- do you have anything else you want to talk about for Played or Watched? How about me? I thought yeah. who was next. I've, oh. I only did Loki because I don't have anything else. Oh. There was busy stuff with the wedding and everything, so, you know, I, all I did was catch yeah, up on shows. I, I'm trying to keep it to end. I haven't been around, like, at all. Like, these last couple weeks have been a blur, listeners. I've been to Arizona. Since, since you last saw me, I went to Arizona. Well, no, um, we did the one last two weeks ago before the wedding. I wasn't we here. Were- that's right. We had just Aiden. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was just us. Yeah, I and even my, my commented mate. on the episode. You're right, you did. Say you guys did a good job without me. You're right. Why would you lie like that? True. <laughs> I didn't even notice he was gone. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's what my I'm saying. God. Um, no, I, was, I wasn't here because uh, sis- it was my sister's birthday, and we we're having a big dinner and i thought it'd be sooner but uh it was not but it's all good um yeah since since the last time i was on i went to arizona i came back uh i wanted to play more games well all right i shouldn't lie like that i have been playing games but i'll get to that shortly Aiden knows exactly what i'm going to say and it's it's shameful 
But uh, over vacation, I started Violet Evergarden. I haven't finished it yet. Uh, I was trying to finish it before coming on today, but I just... It's okay. Again, lost track of time. How far did you get any more from what you said on Sunday? Or no? Uh, yeah, I am up to... I'm like halfway through... Ch uh, I almost said chapter. Halfway through episode 10. Hmm. Yeah. Um... Listeners haven't haven't cried yet, haven't cried. It's fine. Might might affect my score. I don't know yet, but uh, it is right. good. I'll say this for sure: it's very good. Um, I was aching. I was telling uh, Tim yesterday that it was, it was like watching one of those like made for Oscar movies. Uh, so if that means anything, um, Mark. I also started this other show. <laughs> I also okay. started this other show with Leslie called Centaur World. Oh no! It is some autistic shit. I I love it. None of none of you guys would enjoy nope. it. Nope. Maybe Definitely maybe not. Val. I don't know. If no way. Leslie showed what Val at all. Is this no, not My Val, Little no. Pony bullshit. No, Luigi would like it. Yes, he Luigi would. would probably like it, but not Val. It is. It is almost some My Little Pony bullshit. But I like Why it. Is, yo, what's there's just a buff giraffe? With, yeah, bro. Oh, don't worry about it, Aiden. With dude, he's the mega chin. <laughs> he is the mega chin, dude. They're they all got some kind of weird Aspergers with them. It's it's, it's pretty wild. <laughs> uh, but I like it though. It's pretty cool. Um, it's it, like it's all a musical. Uh, it's all it, a musical. It's, it's a musical, yeah. The the entire show is a musical, believe it or not. Wow. Uh, oh, which is I pretty impressive. Already... Um, it it feels like it it was a it was a it was a Cartoon Network show, or it was going to be at one point, and then they just didn't do it. But I don't know. We're like three episodes in. We're laughing a lot. It's funny. It's at least entertaining. Know. Good. It's definitely entertaining. I I kind of like the story. I'm interested in the story. It's very uh, like it's pretty generic. It's about this horse. She gets sucked <laughs> into another dimension. She gets isekai'd actually. Horse isekai. <laughs> she does get isekai'd. She like falls off a cliff, wakes up in this other world, like with these weird fucking centaur creatures, and again they're all like weird autistic creatures, and like they're trapped in a bubble. And this is the first episode. They're trapped in a magical bubble, uh, casted by somebody. We we know like we the viewers have a good idea of like who it is, but like no one knows who set up this force field. But all they know is that the world outside of the bubble is a dark and dangerous place, and they don't want to go there. But the horse is like, I gotta go because I want to go back to my human. And it's a musical. Not many people would enjoy this. It's for like, oh, I you know. I'm wa watching the trailer. I see exactly what kind of show this is. Oh, it's a weird ass show. <laughs> it weird. is yes. Oh yeah. Weird, but uh, yeah. That's all I'll talk about it because like like yeah, no one no one's care gonna care. However, there's a lot of ki and listeners, if you play this game, you play these games. Don't lie. Don't lie. Don't be a coward. My buddy thought it was going to be fucking funny. It turns out it was. He bought me Honey Pop 1. Yes! And I beat it. <laughs> I played through Honey Pop 1 through, like, with an audience. Like, I did not play this game alone. Literally, everybody from my other Discord was, like, in on it. They were invested. Even Rick. I thought Rick was hilarious, Aiden. Oh, yeah. Rick's well, like, Rick is always that guy. Rick is always that guy. He's that mega chat who's like, oh, this shit's for nerds. And he's like, yo, what the fuck is going yo, this on here? this gameplay slaps, though. Dude, he was like, yo, 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 Bubba, fucking, yo, move the red. Move the red. Yo, what about the red? What are you doing? Oh, my God, the purple hearts. I'm like, I thought you didn't care about this, Rick. He's like, nah, I don't. Look, it's cool to shit on leaves, but it's not cool to support bad gameplay. <laughs> Yes. You know, hey, listen. It's a good. It's a good version of Bejeweled. It's a good version. No, of no, I didn't mean bad gameplay. I meant bad gameplay decisions from the player. Oh, oh fair. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I beat that. I beat. That. And uh, I beat that. 
And then they were like, we want to see Honey Pop 2. We want to see Bubba play but Honey Pop 2. And I'm like, I am not free from this mortal coil. Well, if, you had, if you had to give a score to this game, why would it be a 10? <laughs> oh, man. So... Oh, for so many reasons. All right, the gameplay is actually really good. The ga the gameplay is really fucking solid on it. Like the the act of actually matching things is pretty satisfying. Um, the meta is weird, but it's I don't I honestly don't like it. I was pretty upset with it, like in a good way, because I'm like, wow, I really have to pay attention to these bitches because like. If I don't, it's like I want to rack up more honey because the more honey I get, or like not the money, but like the stat bonuses, it's like the better combos I'll get. And it's like later on, you need these combos or you're going to do like you're going to you're going to be in the fucking dirt. Right. So it's like you have no, literally no choice to learn at all the girls is like different traits or you could cheat. Uh, I'm not gonna we lie. Don't do that. We huh? don't do that here. Nah, I cheated. So Ange took screenshots. So I have a friend who is super invested into these games. Like every time I come, in fact, she messaged me. Her and her boyfriend Fabio. They were like, "Are you getting on to play Honey Pop tonight?" <laughs> <laughs> every night. Um. So yeah, I play. I play with an audience. It's funny. Phenomenal. It's hilarious. The dialogue is stupid. And, and like, we, it has us cracking up. They say some pretty, like, graphic stuff. And can I add, the fact that they got full voice acting for these games is astounding. The fact that they could get somebody, they, mic they mic'd somebody up. And they said all of these ridiculous things. And they had to have done it with a straight face. Yep. <laughs> like, I think that is the most impressive bit of the entire game. It, it's it's not easy, but it's an honest day's work, dude. <laughs> like, I'll tell you what the game. Like, we could talk about the gameplay. We could talk about the meta game and all that stuff. Like, like honestly, like, all right, like. For me being a big to the anime expert, like who really gives a shit about the titties in this game? Like, they're not well drawn in the first place, so like it doesn't matter. But like, man, the voice that like the writing is terrible, but they do it on purpose. It's almost like a meme. The whole I game's a meme. Aware of what they're doing. But yeah, it was it was funny. It was funny, and I'm ha I'm like I don't know, like a quarter of the way through the girls and like. Yo, also, I want to talk about real quick, Aiden, the freaking production value jump. Oh, yeah. Between <laughs> one and two. Dude, Honey Pop made money. <laughs> Honey Pop made so much money. So much money. The fact that, like... Man, I don't know. I hate it. I hate this. Yeah, I mean, yo. I hate I it. Love it. You, like, you hate, you hate to see like... it. The it's fact that, all right, I'm going to tell you how many fucking hours I put in this goddamn game. I put 12 oh, hours into the first, first Honey Pop game. How much in a double date? I'm already four, four and a half hours into Honey Pop 2. Hell yeah, brother. I didn't ask for this. I literally didn't ask no, for this. No, you're right. You did not ask for this, but it's happening, and you have an obligation. I have an obligation to my honeys. Oh my goodness. I called all my fans in my uh, in my other Discord. Anyone who pops in the uh, the stream is my honeys. Oh no. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. So yeah. That's what you were watching slash playing. That's that's it. I kind of went on a little bit longer than I want to about Honey Pop. It's fine, dude. You gotta remind the viewers why why you're known as big to the anime expert, Tyler. Yeah, why well, I gotta be the expert. You also sure. played though. If you like match four game, match three, match four games, it's pretty good. Dude, I love Bejeweled. You know I'm gonna love this game. As, as plus, long like, as you are of an appropriate age. <laughs> nah, I don't care, man. You can be five. Play this game. It's good. I don't give a shit. Yeah, all right, fine, whatever. Fuck it. Wait, how much is this game? Okay, no. 
So my friend bought this game for me when it was three bucks. Wait till it's three bucks. That then it's worth. What is it normally? It's ten dollars. Uh, ten. Gosh, I'll wait for the I'll wait for the the winter sale or whatever the fuck's next. Yeah, because I'll tell you what, fucking four, three, four bucks for on average a ten to twelve hour game. That's that's pretty good. Hell yeah, brother. Yeah, I'm 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 done with this. Um, I almost forgot something that I could throw in there. Um, it's been out for a while, but uh, whenever I've been traveling lately, obviously for the honeymoon and then also for work recently, um, I was watching downloaded episodes of Queen's Gambit on uh, my phone on Netflix. This show was really good. Um, definitely not perfect, obviously, but it. It's really interesting in that um, the story is good. It's a pretty simple story that's told really well. But also, honestly, the production of this show is very, very good. The way they use music to tell, to set the mood a lot when there's a <coughs> lot. Obviously, it's a chess show. You know, there's not talking constantly. <laughs> there's not a lot of high action. Um, but the As way they you. use music, the way they do editing, the way the way the, uh, the all the actors are doing an incredible job especially the main girl but um they are all really doing great and just everything about this show feels really well put together like it's one of those things where top to bottom even if you have like things that don't sit perfectly like um a couple things stand out in my mind as things that kind of felt weird about it um like m really minor stuff, like a, like scenes lasting too long or plot lines that don't really go anywhere. Um, but overall, it's a really, really well done show. And it's honestly, if it looks interesting to you at all, I would give it a try. It's so I've actually uh, I've watched I, episode one just because my family had it on when I came over, and it seemed interesting enough that I wanted to start it, but I was waiting to see how well it was received, and then I just forgot it existed. Yeah, no, it, and that's fair. It's not one of those like, oh my god, you have to go watch it. But honestly, if you want something to just work on, that's like a kind of serious show, but you don't have to pay tons and tons of attention. You don't have to know how to play chess. Um, it's just a good kind of small cast personal drama. Uh, I I'll, I'll second that. Oh, you I I, en I enjoyed Queen's Gambit quite a bit. Oh, nice. Uh, definitely worth a watch for sure. Uh, it's uh it's quite a roller coaster. How far have you made it, Tim? No, I finished it last night. Oh, you finished it? Okay. Yeah, when we got off the plane on it's, Saturday, uh... I had like twenty minutes left in the final episode. Funny enough. Um. So I just, I just last night I was like, "Fuck it, I need, I need to finish this, just finish this show." Yeah, I mean, it's it's a good show. It's definitely worth watching for sure. Yeah, it's uh, seven episodes. It, They're like forty five to an hour long. Near the end, they get a little long. Yeah, but it's like very well put together. It's yep. and it's very well paced. Like pacing's great. There's quality. No, there's no real lulls. Um, How many episodes was it? Seven. Seven. Oh wow, it's really short. Yeah. It's more of a mini series, honestly. I was gonna say it's kind of like all the Marvel shows, really. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I have. That I I started some other. St I guess. Oh, uh, Tyler will appreciate this. Tyler, since before we went on the honeymoon, Netflix was like, "Hey, remember how you watched a few minutes of Terminator Two with Tyler that time?" <laughs> <laughs> Did so you I, watch the rest of it? I rewatched Terminator Two from start to finish on the plane Hell ride down. Yeah. The that movie's still fucking incredible. Oh, <laughs> one of the best action oh. movies ever. I yeah. forgot cuz you reminded me. I'm sorry, Tim. Yo, listeners, don't watch the new Resident Evil show. It's garbage. Oh. That's all I want to say. That's all yeah, I want to say. Yeah, I'm glad I forgot about it. I'm glad I Yeah, be it. glad. That shit is abysmal. All right, oh, Tim, boy. keep going. That's all I wanted to say. No, um st continuing cuz uh last week or it was either last week or the week before. I forget if I'd watched it all for the last podcast. Not last week, the one before. I forget if I talked about it last time, but the movies that made us, the the second season came out on Netflix, and I love all the blank that made us shows that Netflix has done. They're one of my favorite documentary series ever. Um, but I guess Netflix was like, hey, you've been watching a lot of documentaries, um, and you love Back to the Future. Why don't you watch this three-part series about John DeLorean, the guy who 
built the DeLorean, who I think were all a little too young, but apparently he was like a really fucking big deal in the car world for a while, even outside of just the car, the DeLorean. Um, yeah, no, he was. It I... was. No, go, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Oh no, he was. He was just having this one guy just come in and try and shake it up was very strange at the time. So it was a weird, it was a weird spot in the industry. Yeah, um, but they actually, so apparently, even back when he was alive, like back in like the '60s and '70s, he had a film crew following him doing a documentary. So there's a documentary on Netflix called, I think it's just called like John DeLorean. There's actually a three-part miniseries and a separate one-episode documentary, like hour and a half. I, I'm watching the miniseries. Um, but they actually have interviews with, like, his ex-wife, the woman who was doing the thing, his son, who was doing, like, the documentary back then, his son. And then they use footage from this old documentary, um, footage from news stories. And it's, like, almost all – it's either all interviews with people now or all old footage from various sources. It's really cool. Um, I'm in the middle of the second episode, so that's why I haven't finished it yet. But it's really well done, and I really want to keep watching it. It's it's a fascinating story about this guy who like became one of the biggest people at like uh, GM back when Detroit was killing it. Was like fuck it, I want to make my own car because I had a midlife crisis. So he's like, the solution is to build a car factory in Northern Ireland during the the fighting between the protestants and the catholics <laughs> what could go wrong um what could go wrong but yeah it's it's really interesting it's really cool to learn the backstory of this car that obviously is super iconic because of the movie but anyway now i really have covered everything um aiden do you have anything i think you're the only one who didn't really broach any I, topics. well i also always play a lot of shit so but, yeah, let's yeah. see. I 100 percented Man Maneater, uh, which is a game from Tripwire, the makers of uh, Killing Floor, and oh. you are a shark. Oh, that isn't, isn't that like the meme one that's, like, not? It is. I didn't really realize it. Imagine Didn't if... they describe it as GTA, you're a shark? I feel like what? that's how the developer yeah, described I mean, this like, game. That, yeah, jokingly, yes. Like, it, it is, it gets pretty absurd. Like, it starts out rather benign. You're just like a little baby shark, you know? You go around, like, eating baby turtles and shit. And then, like, by the end, you're, you're like, basically a megalodon. Like, flop all the way. You, like, leap out of the water onto golf courses. <laughs> like, flop uh, around eating, like, 15 people. <laughs> are you saying that this is more violent EVO? Yes. That is exactly what this game is. All right. Well, I guess I need to play it now. <laughs> it's for it's it's on Game Pass. If you're interested, oh, that's actually yeah. the only reason I played it. Like it was, it's a fun little collectathon Metroidvania thing. Like there's certain areas you can't go until you reach certain evolution points. Like, uh, you have like different. Uh, body parts that you can put on like you can change like your teeth and your fins and your tail and oh, shit, shit like that and it actually EVO yes hell <laughs> yes you, like, you go around just consuming shit and like you get points you spend the points to upgrade yourself so that you can then be better at eating more shit amazing but like the, loop. the environments were like pretty cool like it, it's it was, uh, it almost reminded me of, like, those old, uh, like, old Tony Hawk's Pro Skater shit. Like, the, like, challenges in Need for Speed, or not Need for Speed, in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, uh, okay. or Tony Hawk's Underground, or Underground 2. Mm -hmm. Like, collect all the skate things, or, like, do this trick in this place, jump over this thing. Like, every zone in the game is set up a lot like that. Uh, and it's a really, it, it's, it was definitely, it, it was fun. Like, it only took me, like, 20 hours to get through it, if that. Like, maybe 15. And you can collect everything in the game. It's a fun little, like, double-A game. It, it was, it was good. Um. 
It's very rare that I hear someone describe it, a game as double A, but... Yeah, it, it's like one of those like mid-tier PlayStation 2 games that we used to have back in the day before everything could afford to be a triple A. Hmm. Uh, like, it's just a good way to kill 15 hours, 10 or 15 hours, and it's just fun. It's just, like, stupid fun. Like, just flopping across a, ga a golf course at people and eating them <laughs> is great. It's just, it's just satisfying. Um, other than that, I've been playing a lot of Halo, Split nice, Gate. Nice, nice, nice. Yo, fucking uh, Halo... And... It's almost like that's what we're gonna watch you guys play if unless you go do something else after this. Uh, the or I, I also I I started playing Final Fantasy twelve and the combat kind of weirded me out. Whoa! So yeah, I don't know. Unusual. I don't know if I'm gonna go back A to little. that. It just didn't feel it definitely it does not feel like Final Fantasy. Not at all. It's it's a completely different game. No, because they were like, yo. We're just gonna take Final Fantasy XI and put it into this game, kind of. Let's take Final Fantasy XI yeah. and yeah, push and it over, it over there. here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. No, it was because, uh, like, if you, what I do like about that game, even though like people kind of dog on it, I like the idea of, oh, hey, if I'm good enough at programming, um. I can make the game play itself, and all I have to do is just move the left analog stick. Ah, uh, yes, EVE Online. Yes. Wait, is that a thing? Can you, like, program, like, AI behavior? Yeah, so, well, oh. they, they, um, it is disguised as the Gambit system, which I don't oh, know if okay. you've been I, in... I, I haven't made, I haven't even gotten there yet. Uh, yeah. I've heard you talk about this, though. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty cool. Um and like for some of the harder bosses like Felipe could totally explain that better to you if you ever talk to him, but like you really need those when you get to like the really harder bosses and if like you if you decide to fight Yasma, like you, you it would be ideal to have that because it's like immediately if someone goes under like 30% health, like, they get an auto potion or an auto life, or, like, you know, when this character does this, this character will do this, like, it's okay. it's super good. I might... And, I'll, I'll have to get further and see how I feel about that. I'll, I'll give it I'll give it a good couple hours. Give it some time to evolve a little bit. Drop it. Um... The big one that I've been playing, which I have been enjoying immensely, is uh, the Ascent, which Wait, is an isometric twin stick RPG shooter. <laughs> Whoa! I feel In like Cyber I've heard about this game. Yeah, it's on Ga It's on Game Pass. Is it co-op? It is on Game Pass. It is also co-op. Oh shit! Time to play it and let's go. I'll download this Dude, right now. Dude, dang! I've been trying to find motherfuckers to right. play this goddamn game. I'm opening it right now, Aiden. I'm opening it right now. <laughs> Thank I'm you. Start the download right this second. I'm down for a co-op oh, yeah, shooter. Dude. Let's go. Let's go. But like, it's a, it's like a very, you know, when you th when I think of like twin stick shooters, like I think of shit like Isaac. Or like, um, like roguelikes mainly. That game that you guys were playing all the time, the synthetic, okay. like shit like that, where it's like you just go through like these small levels and you get to the end where there's a boss or whatever. You kill the boss and then move on, and there would maybe be like a story in between if this was like an RPG. But this has like an entire open world to it. Like it's, it has a ton of verticality and it looks all gorgeous. sorts of the typical yeah, it looks really really good um it's like it's a pretty new game right uh it's less than a month old yes this is new yeah it's um but like the whole it, it's just a it's a very well put together world like It, I hate to say it, but Fabio is right. It, it's just this is actually Cyberpunk 2077. Ooh. Damn. <laughs> like the whole everything together. Like it, it's honestly something that I find very difficult to describe, just because of how 
just overwhelming it is. I I mean it 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 hit me personally like in a way that not a lot of other games do. Um but like being in these different areas like this is where everybody from the floors above dump all their trash down and shit like that. Like you can make connections inside the world almost like like Dark Souls. Hmm. Like there are just hints to like how the world works in the environment that you're playing in which I find really really enjoyable. But hell yeah, yeah I, I look forward to co-oping with it. I'm it's downloading. If not tonight, then soon. Yeah, hell yeah. Free on Spe- Game Pass. Speaking of soon though, unless there's something else we should probably end soon. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, we are out of things to talk about. So that's it. That's the last thing. Thank you all so much for listening. Uh we will be back probably in two weeks, maybe in two weeks, I don't know. Um but either way, thank you all so much for showing up. We will see you guys later. My name is Timpedia. Friedman. Just Tyler. A Dune. And we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>